Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Katie from It's a Creek Farm. We are a small diversified farm in northern Wisconsin, zone 3B, and we grow pumpkins, mums, Christmas trees, sheep. Uh, we have a flock of Navajo churro sheep, a herd of Dexter cows, and pastured poultry, chicken, turkey, that kind of stuff. Um, and I am on my way down to the high tunnel because I you can see, oh, that's flipped, but it is 91.6 inside the little heated tent that I made for my seedlings, which is way too hot. So I'm on my way down to go adjust the heater. The driveway is getting clearer. It is like seven o'clock at night and it's still light out. The birds are chirping. It is feeling like spring. Being cautiously optimistic because in the morning, supposed to another storm system is supposed to roll in but I am hoping that it is just gonna bring some rain we're supposed to start with freezing rain which is like all these storms that we're getting start with freezing rain and end up with a lot of snow so I'm hoping it just stays at rain not that we want freezing rain but um, if it could just stay warm that would be wonderful Right, so what we did, we have this infrared heater here, and I just took uh, two lengths of electrical conduit and ran across, and then I just draped the frost cloth over it. But I think what the problem is, is the sensor is back over here at the fresh air intake. So that makes life a little difficult. it says it's 53 in here which is okay for these guys but I don't want it to get any colder so I need to figure out something let me let me think for a minute oh that's the water I'll show you that in a second okay, so I draped it over the back and we're gonna give that a go and see if that makes a difference I might need to put the heater more in the center and then put something on the end where the heater is and drape it that way, um, which would probably good, be good just to just do it. Which would probably be good to just do that now that I'm thinking about it. But I gotta find something that's a little lower to the ground but about the same height as that so that uh, the seedlings aren't touching the white fabric there. But this weird noise, let me show you what this is we hooked up the drip line on my peas. We had this small section of the header of the drip line and we had two lengths of drip tape and so we have the drip tape all hooked up here but there's a leak <laughs> and it shoots really far across and so I just put this on it so that it wouldn't spray down there but I'm thinking these guys will probably germinate tomorrow if I had to guess knowing how quickly peas go because I've been watering in here for like two days now um, let's see yeah it's looking green so that's good oh and it's starting to crack open wonderful yes yeah, so I bet tomorrow we'll start seeing things sprout a little bit there Maybe the next day. There's another one that came uncovered. Uh oh, this came undone. That's why. That's why it's flooded down here. Okay, I gotta fix this leak too. Okay, so we got a temporary fix on that, and now I'm going to move this heater so it's in the center here, and then that way the temperature sensor will be able to sense um, the temperature of the inside better, and I'll just put plants on both sides of it.
Okay, so this has a thermometer or a thermostat on it. So I turned it down to 60 because then it'll kick off sooner. And I have it more centered. And um, I covered the back, but I left lots of space so that it still has good airflow. So we will see. Um, it says it is dropping. It's down to 88, 87.9. So, I'm just going to watch that and see how it does. Um, that's all I can do. These are all just zinnias and marigolds. So, if they end up kicking the bucket, not that big of a deal, but I prefer that they don't. So, all right, now Owen and Beck are working on a project for me. So, let's go up and see what they're doing. So Beck is getting a path plowed to the pen where we are going to move the bull and the steer so that um, we can get them moved this weekend and hopefully nobody has their calves before the weekend. Um, so our plan is to move them Saturday if all works well, but once we get this snowbank out of here then we can get it so that it uh, they have a path and we can get them put in there then. Um, so the, this snowbank was like the big hurdle. And um, since today is Monday or Tuesday, um, we'll have the rest of the week to make paths. If need be, uh, we can do that with either the tractor or the skidder or the four-wheeler or something. Um, just so that there's like more space. I have to walk the fence line and cut down trees and branches from the storms off. So it's gonna be a project that I'm working on this week. Um, but this getting the snowbank out of there is the first big step because uh, we, the cows couldn't have gotten in if we had wanted them to. That is. So this is about four feet tall. Our driveway is getting all dug up, but that is okay. We will just have to fix it. Um, this is the bigger priority right now than our driveway. Remy. Is that a new snowbank for you? The coyotes have been out here like crazy. So the dogs kind of go crazy during the day. Did we have them in the house at night? But they go crazy during the day because of all the coyote smells. And high tunnel heater update. It is down to 86 in there. So it is dropping quickly, which is wonderful. Heck, if it stayed at 86 all night, I'd be happy too. As long as it didn't get any higher than that. But that is perfect. And knowing that is on a thermostat is wonderful. And so I know that it'll kick on if it gets below 60. That is it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see you next time.